the Son of God, became the Son of Man, that the sons of men might become the sons of God. And so we have this tremendous prophecy, 700 years before the birth of Jesus, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name God is with us. Well, we turn over also to the ninth chapter of Isaiah. And here the prophet speaks again about this great theme of the coming of Jesus into the world. Chapter 8 ends with a description of moral and spiritual darkness. When they, verse 19, when they say to you, seek those who are mediums and wizards, who whisper and mutter, should not a people seek their God? Should they seek the dead on behalf of the living? To the law and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. They will pass through it hard, pressed and hungry. And it will happen when they are hungry that they will be enraged and curse their king and their God and look upward. Then they will look to the earth and see trouble and darkness, gloom of anguish, and they will be driven into darkness. That is a terrible picture of the moral and spiritual darkness of this world. But then you see in chapter 9 and verse 2 we read, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. And Isaiah speaks about this in a number of places throughout his prophecy. For example, we have in chapter 42, verse 6, God speaks to Christ, the Messiah. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will hold your hand. I will keep you. And I will give you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the Gentiles, to open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the prison, those who sit in darkness from the prison house. And again in 49.6, indeed he says, It is too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved ones of Israel. I will also give you as a light to the Gentiles that you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. And in 60 verse 1, Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. And you see these great prophecies of the coming of light into the darkness they speak of Jesus Christ. Old Simeon had been waiting for many many years for the coming of God's Messiah and finally there came that great day in his life when the Holy Spirit spoke to him and told him to go into the temple and there in the temple he saw the young child Jesus brought there for the circumcision and he took the child in his arms and he prayed saying Lord now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word for my eyes have now seen your salvation 
which you have prepared before the face of all the peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And of course we know that the Lord Jesus himself said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And here again, Isaiah is simply pointing forward to the coming into the world of that light which enlightens every man. It is one of the ways in which the Bible speaks about the saving work of the Lord Jesus. He brings knowledge. He brings the knowledge of God in the place of spiritual ignorance. If we desire to know God, we must come to know Him through Jesus Christ. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. There is one way to the knowledge of God, and that is by the knowledge of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. There is no other way. And he comes as light, bringing moral purity in the place of moral degradation and moral pollution. He transforms those who come to him. He is light. And if we are to walk with God, we must walk in the light. That light in whom there is no darkness. Is Jesus Christ the light in your life? Is he the one who has brought to you the knowledge of God? Can you say that through him you know God and you walk in the light of God? Well, he's spoken there about the coming of the light, and then he goes on to explain it in chapter eight, in chapter nine, verse six. He says, "For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given." This light who came into the world, he is coming in a person. It is not light in some abstract sense. It is in the person of Jesus Christ, the Son of David, the Son of God. And he tells us more about the person of the Lord Jesus in verse 6. The government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful. Wonderful, that speaks of the effects that he would have upon people. Bringing wonder, amazement, astonishment. It is a word that is used repeatedly in the Old Testament with reference to God himself, who is wonderful. He does wonders, he does wonderful things. The birth of Jesus was wonderful. It was this divine intrusion into the human race. God becoming man in the person of the Virgin's Son. His life was wonderful. He did no sin. We cannot even begin to imagine that. We cannot begin to imagine what a sinless man would be like. A man with no trace of pride or arrogance or self-will or envy or lust or greed or malice. A man altogether walking in the light of God with no trace of darkness. 